Hi, good afternoon and welcome. We are here in studio. We're going to talk some sports with Val for the last time here in 2023. It just uh, here flew by, I tell you. It, it seems like the older we get, the, the faster it seems like uh, time goes. And this will be the last show for us for this year. Yeah, we have to work. Yeah, we have to kind of pick up our pace to keep keep pace with all the other kids with all the kids that we're covering. Yeah, a lot of good things going on this year. Of course, you know my highlight of the year, I guess you could say, was probably the uh, the run that the Cast and Lady Comets made back in uh, the spring in the softball. I think that was uh, kind of the highlight of the year athletically for uh, for us, our coverage area, and making it all the way. You know, they hadn't gone past the sectional round and uh, not only do they get past the sectional they get through the regional and a very very difficult semi-state two two games in one day at uh, frankfurt and make it all the way to the state championship game so that, that kind of highlights my year i would just say the cast and girls in general yeah yeah i mean they're we've really been kind of embedded in their lives yeah and they've been very gracious to accept us in because we've been kind of following the same group of kids for essentially 12 months a year yeah, yeah. They've they've been uh, everything they've been, every, everything from the everything from the 4-H fair to true. to volleyball, basketball, and softball. Yeah, and you know what they're what they're going to do in 24. Yeah, you know that's that's going to be the the question there for them. So, but uh, yeah, hard to believe that uh, this is it. 23 is is almost done. Christmas is coming up next Monday, and mm-hmm. a week from that, New Year's, and we'll be hitting it hard for uh, 2024. So, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Lori Shane, who is retiring after 41 years as a teacher. That is a long time. the last 24 years as a teacher in the Rochester schools. She's taught everything from elementary to middle school, elementary school to middle school to high school, and of course she's, I know her, because she's one of the all-time great sports moms. Mm -hmm. I mean, Brody and Zach are her kids, and she, you know, Lori and her husband Bobby were at all of it, so um, and we're always big supporters of mine. So congratulations, Lori, on a fantastic career. You are universally admired uh, among all your students. I know that. Yeah, that's uh, that's a long time. I was seven years old when she started teaching. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a long time. And, and you know, teaching if you're if you don't love it, it can take it out of you. But obviously, she uh, had a passion for what she was doing and uh, did it did it to a high level. Yeah. So. Congratulations and uh, enjoy your retirement. Yeah. So, well, let's start off here uh, talking some sports with some Rochester zebras. Let's start off with the wrestling this time, Val. Sure. I mean, uh, I, we were at the uh, Rochester John McKee Memorial Invitational on Saturday, and Rochester won the tournament with 261 points. They beat a, a field of 17 teams, and this was. Uh, just a, fa- a fantastic performance by Rochester with six individual champions. No other school had more than two. And, uh, you know, the six individual champions were included Lane Horn in 126 and uh, uh, Brant Beck at 165. Uh, uh, Colin, uh, excuse me, Wyatt Davis won at 150, Brant Beck at 165, uh, Colin Wien at 190, Alex Deming at 215, and Brady Beck at heavyweight. Uh, both Beck brothers, Alex Deming and Lane Horn, are still undefeated on the season. <laughs> As we start this uh, show, uh, Rochester is actually at the Rensselaer Joe Bourbon duels this weekend, so we'll see how long they. As we speak, as we uh, do this show, so we'll see how long they can keep it. They still have four undefeated wrestlers, yeah. at, and it's almost Christmas. Uh, you are on a roll as a program, and but and, uh, and they're not taking it easy. It's not like they're just playing a bunch of cupcakes wrestling right. against a bunch of cupcakes. Right. I mean, right. You know, at the John McKee invite. I mean, we had Hamilton Heights was there. Uh, Elkhart was there, and Elkhart Elkhart was second. I think that was a little bit of a surprise. I think you know El- we knew Elkhart was good. We didn't know they'd finished in second place, but Hamilton Heights was there. They're a they're a top ten team in I think class two A. Uh, Cowan is a class uh, top ten team in class one A. They'll be back uh, in early January back at Rochester for the the uh, team state duel. So they're they're a team that Rochester is very familiar with through the years through semi state and through these tournaments. So. Yeah, for Raj- and and North Miami. I mean, they're going to be back here for mm-hmm. the for the uh, for the the team state duels, and they're certainly going to be one of the top contenders in the TRC this year. So, again, Rochester had six individual champions, and no other school had more than two. I mean, that was just a remarkable performance by Rochester. I mean, they 
it, there's little that they can do anymore that can surprise us. Yeah. But um, it was just another great performance. And, of course, uh, if you read my article, I really focused on Brant Beck only because he beat uh, the kid Le- Levi Abbott from Kyle, and he beat him 4-3 to three in the championship match. Mm-hmm. Last time he wrestled Levi Abbott, he lost 7-3 to three in last year's semi-state. Yeah. In the third place match at last year's semi state. And he got a he got a little extra accolade on uh, Saturday, not just uh winning the thing, but he also had a, a little extra he, with the Outstanding Wrestler Award, yeah. yeah. I, I've been covering this meet for almost two decades and I don't think a Rochester wrestler's ever won it until Brant did it. Wow. And he got a he got a takedown I mean, again Brant was ranked number four in the state, Levi Abbott's ranked number five in the state. Yeah. We this was the showdown that we were kind of all anticipating, and Levi Abbott got off to a great start. He was up three to nothing, and Brant just he just does not stop wrestling. He does not get discouraged. He just keeps going, and eventually, um, you know, I mean, Brant won four to three. He got a takedown with one second to go to to win the match. But it was also worth noting that um, Levi Abbott got called for a stalling penalty. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's a one point penalty, and mm-hmm. Brant won the match by one point. Yeah, so. I mean, again, Brant is always moving forward, and you know the officials thought that Abbott was kind of taking a step back. He was backtracking, and he just he just got worn down. And I mean, the match ends, and Brant gets the takedown. The place is going wild, and Brant's you know he's just running around. He's high fiving everybody, and and Abbott just kind of just sitting there, just like, what just happened to me? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he just he was he just got exhausted. Yeah, and I mean he. Well, we've seen that from Brand on the football yeah. field. I mean, that's the way he runs the ball. I yeah. mean, he just doesn't quit. I mean, just a just a motor that just does not stop. Yeah, so. and he's the same way as a wrestler. You know, Alex Deming was just dominant. I mean, he's he's been if anything, he's been even more dominant at two fifteen than he was at one ninety five last year. Um, he he did not get challenged. Uh, same thing with Lane Horn. I mean. Lane is on a mission. You know, he got upset at the state finals last year. He is just on a mission this year. I, uh, you know, the the kid he wrestled in the finals was from Cowan. Uh, the kid, he he was just desperate not to get pinned. And I mean, really at this point, if you make it to the second period against Lane, you're doing pretty decent. But again, Lane just kind of was patient and patient and patient, and finally got him in a kind of a wing in the top, flipped him over, and once he got once he flipped him over, that was it. Uh, but, again, Lane has been absolutely dominant as well. Brady Beck wrestled a kid from Tri- Tri-West in the championship who had a lot, was like 19-1, and one, and Brady just dominated him. I I don't know how you get a takedown against Brady Beck. I mean, because he's he moves so well for a guy who weighs like 250, 260 pounds. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't give you any openings, and he's just relentless. Yeah. Uh, kind of like his younger brother as well. Yeah. Um, and that's the impressive thing, too. You talked about uh, Alex moving up, Brady moved up. Uh, you know, there's there's several of these wrestlers that have moved up a, a weight class and just have not missed a beat. Yeah. Wyatt Davis was a kid who made the state finals at 113 two years ago. Now he's at 150. Yeah. And he won his title. He beat a very, very good wrestler from Hamilton Heights, was ranked number 11 in the state. You know, Wyatt's unranked because part of it's because he's – um, he was dealing with some kind of some health issues earlier in the year, but mm-hmm. and uh, but now that he's, I mean, now that he beat the number eleven wrestler in the state, I mean, that goes to show you where Wyatt stands. Right, I mean, right. and not only that, but Wyatt was wearing kind of a brace on his left shoulder. So, and on top of that, Clint Gard said he was sick earlier in the week, so he was hmm. sick and had a left shoulder, mm-hmm. and yet he went eight to five, and he he just gutted one out. I mean, that was a great win for Wyatt. So, uh, and then Colin Wee in four. Four matches, four pins, mm-hmm. and nobody made it to the second period. Yeah. And we were really interested to see how he was going to do against, well, and we'll talk about him later, Pete Duval from Caston, who wrestled great to get to the final. And Colin just, he beat him. And I mean, it was a good match for about a minute and a half, and then it took him about 15 seconds to pin Pete. I mean, yeah. and, and pins, Pete's not a small guy, and Colin just. Yeah. Well, and, and Colin is one of those that, I mean, how far has he come from this time last year till now? Yeah. I mean, he kind of he kind of really came out of nowhere a little bit and turned into just a stud. Yeah. I asked Colin, I said, Colin, how much did you weigh at the end of football season and how much do you weigh right now? He said, I weighed about 230 at the end of football season, mm-hmm. and I weighed in this morning at 187. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I could I could use that kind he, of a thing. He, but, had, yeah. he, he had three pounds to spare. Yeah, 
And so, and Clint Gard said he he really was kind of he was concerned because he said if he if you're focused that much on your weight, I mean, mm-hmm. if you got to lose that much weight, you're you're not focusing enough on wrestling. I mean, again, but uh, he, he is just so strong at 190. So I'm curious to see what kind of run Colin makes. I think he's ranked number. He's not ranked in the top 20 in the state, but he's got to be close. Uh, he's ranked number seven among wrestlers in the East Chicago semi-state. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. It's going to be interesting this, yeah. uh, this and, stretch run, right? And by the yeah. way, the Beck bro- uh, Brant Beck's four in the state. Brady Beck is two. Deming is uh, nine, and Lane Horn is uh, seven. Yeah, and those are the rankings. Those are the overall rankings. Overall those rankings the, in the state. Yeah. All four of them are ranked in the top ten in yeah. the state. Those aren't the one A rankings for the yeah right. Those are the so overall. and almost all of those guys will have to see a Crown Point kid at semi state of. Maybe we'll see how far they can go, and obviously they're gonna. They've got really tough kids before then. Yeah, yeah. Saw so Penn beat Mishawaka in a duel the other night. Yeah. Penn is the one school where that their big guys might compete with Rochester's big guys. Yeah, they're really looking forward to that team state coming up in early January. That's, Can't wait for that. I mean, yeah. it's gonna be a great tournament. Adam Central is currently ranked number one in the state. Rochester two. Tell City is three. Tell City beat Rochester at Team State duels each of the last two years. Yeah. You know, the, it's a long trip up from Tell City to, to Rochester, but they'll be ready to go. Yeah. Anything else wrestling wise here? I uh, wanted to give a shout out to Declan Gardy, who was second at lo- at uh, 175, lost to a really tough kid and Hartley Hoover from North Miami. Yeah. Hartley is a, you know, they're both sophomores, so this might just maybe the start of a good rivalry. Yeah. Hartley's a really good defensive wrestler, and he is built. Yeah. And so I'm really excited. You know, Declan, Declan's another kid who has made big strides in the last, literally big strides. He went from 145 to 175, but he's transformed his body and has transformed his wrestling, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything going on on the girls' side? Uh, well, they're, they're also in Rensselaer this this weekend. Okay. You know, the whole, everybody went to Rensselaer, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, but n- nothing new to report there, but except, uh, you know, three top ten kids and Lily Gerald and uh, Lane Pepler and Grace Hirams. Uh, Lily is going to probably wrestle at Team State Duels at 106. Grant Holloway's got a meniscus injury. It's going to require surgery. The Colts team doctor is taking care of this, and they have kind of assured uh, the Holloway family and Clint Gard that he will be back at some point this season. They hope for conference, definitely for sectional. Conference is January 20th. Yeah. Wow. So a month from now, basically. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, how about the swimmers? I know that you had a lot of uh, good articles that you that you wrote this week on the swimming, and uh, how are they doing? The girls won a couple dual meets. They beat Logansport last Saturday. It was actually a three-way. It was Rochester, Logansport, and Kokomo. They split. They beat Logansport, lost to Kokomo, but the win over Logansport was their first win of the year. And then they beat Culver the other day, 93-51. to I mean, Culver only has four girls, but still... Yeah, uh, Rochester got a win. Kylie Hasselby has done a really nice job. She's a freshman. She does diving and swimming. One of the uh, you know Kendall Bradley did a little bit of that last year, but you know Kylie is really good. I mean, she can do the you know she's a good she's a really improving diver, and she's also can do the fifty free. And then uh, you know they're 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 um, developing in other events. Ava Thomas has been swimming very well of late, um, but it's been again she's Ava's probably one of the more experienced swimmers on the team. Uh, Peyton Moore has improved her times. Uh, they've got, uh, um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of, you know, Audrey Whitman uh, ha- has been swimming pretty well. Aubrey Miller uh, won the 50 free the other day. Aubrey is a sophomore. She's new to swimming. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is a team that's, uh, you know, a lot of enthusiasm, and I think their experience and their enthusiasm is catching up. Now it's, here we go uh, into the hard part of the season. This is, you know, win- winter break means heavy mileage. I mean, mm-hmm. so yeah. they're going to be swimming a lot, and they're going to get exhausted. But, again, it's part of part of building up yeah. uh, moving forward. And then uh, on the boys' side, uh, the boys have been swimming very well. They beat both Logansport and Kokomo the other day. Uh, Culver didn't have a team, so they had an inter-squad scrimmage. The inter-squad scrimmage was pretty fiercely competitive. They, they split them into the gold and the black teams, but... Uh, yeah, the gold team wound up winning, but uh, yeah, they were. Oh yeah, they they weren't taking it easy on each other. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's a pretty good Logan Sports swim team that they were able to beat. Right, they've got a kid named Logan Sports got a kid named Fincher who's going to mm-hmm. be a state contender in the fifty and the one hundred free. He did beat Jake Cipher, but uh, Rochester's got good depth. You know, Reese Johnson 
has been swimming very, very well. Tanner Reese in the distance events mm -hmm. has been really picking up his game. Uh, you know, Tanner's probably not going to swim the 500 free at sectional, only because that's really Jake Cipher's event, but Tanner can swim the 200 free, the 500 free. Uh, he's, he can also swim the butterfly. Uh, and then, you know, Reese is, uh, I mentioned Reese Johnson. I mentioned, uh, I should, we should mention uh, Wes Steininger. And the, he can do the individual medal. He can do basically any, any event that you ask him to. Um, and uh, Spencer Backus has really been coming on as well this year as a sophomore. Yeah. I think Fincher, did I see he broke the school record for the 200 free that was like 32 years old? Uh, yeah, recently. I, I, I don't know if it was in that meet, but it, he broke that recently. Right, I think he's more of a sprinter, but that doesn't doesn't surprise me. He's yeah. been around for a while, and yeah, I mean that's a <laughs> really good record if it, if it stood up for thirty two years. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. All right, uh, anything else with the with the swimmers? I know that, like you said, they're getting ready to to put some uh, serious miles in on the pool here this uh, over break. Right, right. And again, we we want to hear about all the swimming teams in our area, so uh, send us your stuff. Yeah. All right, the uh, the girls' basketball, um, you know, rough night last night. We'll talk about that a little bit. But, uh, you know, they're 7-7, seven and seven, but five of those seven are conference wins, and none of the seven losses are conference losses. So 5-0 and oh in the conference, and big one for the, uh, the Lady Zs uh, with North Miami in town. Uh, last week, and we'll take some uh, a look at some highlights from that one. Uh, last time North Miami came to Rochester, they really laid the wood to the Zebras. Yeah, they steamrolled Rochester in that game and really kind of show what kind of factor they were in the TRC, and this was just a different... Uh, this was a motivated Rochester bunch. Of course, they lost to, at North Miami by, what, five last year. Last time these two uh, teams will play as conference foes. Yeah. North Miami moving over to the HNAC next year. And I know uh, something that the uh, the Rochester coaches had talked about uh, before this game, actually before the Wabash game, was get the ball in the post. And if you can get the ball in the post, that will set up uh, opportunities uh, f for, from the outside later. They did a really nice job there in the first quarter. Uh, all six of the, or the first six Zebra points were all from Jaden Field. Mm -hmm. And uh, another post play there for uh, Bollinger. So... I really, I really right. like those post players for for Rochester. They're they're really, really doing a good job. Yeah, and Jaden Field had what eleven points and eight rebounds in this game. Part of it too is feeding the post, which and I know we had talked about that. Yeah. That's something that had uh, had improved. And this was uh, Caden Hanley getting her one thousandth career point on a three pointer about halfway through the second quarter. That made it fourteen to ten. Caden came in with nine hundred ninety five points. She wound up scoring thirteen in this game. And North Miami would get it back down to 14-13. And Riley Clevenger gets warmed up a little bit at that point. Right. And, uh, I, again, I think the thinking was, you know, that you you had established the the post earlier now. That led to open looks from Riley. I was kind of surprised, actually, by how open Riley was. But, again, North Miami had paid a lot of, atten pay a lot of attention in the post to Jaden Field and Audrey Bollinger. And on top of that, Emily Smith got in severe foul trouble. By this point in the game, she had already fouled out. This is yes. This is with three minutes to go in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. She had fouled out. Yeah. Uh, Clev Clevenger scored Rochester's first nine points of the second half. Good work there, Field Padner. Uh, rebound stats a little bit, yeah. and then getting the put back. Yeah, you know, that's where Ella is just so dangerous. That little jumper from the free throw lane. They can get her the ball. There's nobody really that's going to contest that. It was 28-20 Rochester at the end of three quarters. So they, again, they were up by one at the half. They expanded it to an eight-point lead. Another three there. That's four, I think, for Clevenger. Right. She, she, she scored 12 over 14 points in the second half. And then that was basically the final... That was the dagger. Big three-pointer by Aubrey Wilson. Put him up by 12 with a little over two minutes to go. You know, I, I we talk about these freshmen. Obviously, they got thrown into the fire early with the, with the you know, just having the seven girls. But Aubrey Wilson, I mean, she runs this team from that point guard spot like a veteran. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are seniors that don't play with as much composure as Aubrey does. Mm-hmm. 
and she does things that you know need to be done. If she needs to score, she can score. If uh, she needs to facilitate and handle the ball, uh, she can do that as well. And and she doesn't seem to you know get too worked up over you know hey I only scored three points this game or anything like that. I mean she's just uh, mature far beyond her years. Yeah. And she gets right, and they've Coach Joel Burris has kind of moved from what he called the three guard front to a two guard front. In other words, he was so worried about the ball handling earlier this year, he felt like he needed to bring Ellen McCarter out on the floor to help out right. Wilson and Clevenger with the ball handling. But if Wilson Clevenger can handle it by themselves, he can put Ella at the high post, yeah. especially against a team that plays zone, and Ella can facilitate from the high post, which where she's really dangerous. Right, and so. Almost uh, like a two-one-two kind of look. Yeah, and so because um, they were able to kind of do that last year when they had Emma Hodeshell and Callie Watson, but again, Emma and Callie aren't here. So how how is that looking to evolve? Yeah, and it's starting to evolve pretty well. Yeah, and I, I think that's uh, all you know due to the fact, like you said, that uh, that Aubrey's doing so well with mm-hmm. ball handling. I mean, yeah. it's. it's it's kind of freed Ella up to, to be able to do that, and that's where she is so dangerous because she's got the height, that uh, and she's a great passer too. Yeah. You know, so she catches it in the high post, and there's somebody open on the opposite or somebody open on the block. Uh, you know, she can make that pass and right. facilitate that. Right. Yeah. And Cle- Clevenger's a really good passer too. I know we mm-hmm. talked about her post passing, but that one pass she had, Rochester doesn't have many fast breaks. Mm-hmm. That one pass she they had one in this game against North Miami from half court. She threw a pass right on the nose to mm-hmm. field for a layup in transition. Yeah, I mean that was a beautiful pass. Yeah, I would imagine Joel Burris's heart went through his throat, but <laughs> yeah, that was a risky pass, but it was right on the button. And yeah, I mean, and defensively, uh, they've also. I mean, Aubrey's also been really good. And you know, Joel Burris told Aubrey, he "Goes just focus on your." He goes, "If you focus on your defense, because because we need you to be kind of our point on our." Point person on our defense as well, and that will, you know, if you if you do that, the offense will come. Yeah. And I mean, she had a great defensive game against Wabash. She had a really good defensive game in this game against North Miami as well. Yeah. Held the team the average is forty five a game. Held them to twenty eight. Yeah. Yeah. A really good defensive effort. And you know, they went down to Michigan Town last night, taking on eleven and one Clinton Central. That's, that's a team that's going to make a lot of noise in the one A tournament this year. Um, you know, Coach Don Helmick, of course, he was at Caston for a lot of years. They, you know, they lo- they lose by 16, but there's a lot of good things that you can take out of this game. Um, they held uh, Clinton Central to 47, which ties their season low for mm-hmm. point output. And you know, they they really, I thought they kind of dominated on the on the boards. I thought that uh, the big the bigs inside did a really good job of uh, rebounding for Rochester against a very uh, talented Clinton Central team. Right, because even in the win over North Miami, even in the Wabash and North Miami games, which were both Rochester wins, they didn't really rebound very well. Um, but against Clinton Central, I thought they'd really rebounded well. I know I, I think Adela McCarter was seven rebounds to go with her seven points. And uh, Audrey Bollinger did well on the boards. Jaden Field was in foul trouble most of the night, but she rebounded pretty well while she was in there. So, yeah, I guess that was a good sign. But uh, as for the game, you know, Clinton Central... They only averaged 13 turnovers a game, which is a pretty good number. They only had nine turnovers last night. Rochester just couldn't really disrupt them defensively. Mm-hmm. And, again, uh, you know, uh, Parkinson and uh, Davison were just great. I mean, they're... Yeah. Davison, I mean, just uh, just a sophomore, but, I mean, she controls that team, you know, kind of like what we were talking about with Wilson, uh, even a, another level higher for her. I mean, she is a, uh, a true, and I think Coach... Uh, uh, Burris mentioned last night he thinks that she'll probably play at the next level. I mean, she is that good of a player and, and she can really facilitate that team. Yeah, I mean, she had 11 points, but it's kind of hard to describe all that she does to help a team yeah. and, you know, keeps them in their offense, gets them into their offense. Uh, you know, if, uh, if anything, she she's probably should shoot more. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, she can penetrate. But she also knows she just makes good decisions on the court. Those are basketball instincts from a kid who obviously has played a lot of basketball and loves yeah. the game. Yeah, I, I, probably next year when when Parkinson and Robbins graduate, she'll probably mm-hmm. have to score more. But I think right now she's facilitating with what she has and doing a great job of yeah. it. Yeah, Parkinson led the way with 16, and Robbins had 14, and that was yeah. I would imagine if they get 14 from Robbins, they're just about unbeatable. Yeah, 
yeah. But, I mean, that was, you know, again, they're winning games by about 27 a game, and they only won by 16 last night. Yep. So the, the Lady Z's are off till after Christmas. Next Friday they head over to North White. Uh, should be a nice little tournament there. I, I think the, the Lady Z's have a good shot of coming out of this with some hardware. As they take on 4-10 and 10 Couts, and the other game it's going to be uh, Clinton Prairie, who's only 2-11, and 11, taking on 0-13 North White. So should be a pretty good chance of uh, some, you know having a really good day there, a couple wins for right. the Z's. Joel Burris told us in his post-game interview that he goes, we've got to win, you know, we're, the, the goal is to win this tournament. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and there's no reason why it shouldn't be Cops coming off to a loss to LaPorte earlier in the week. They're got, they've got a new coach. Uh, and uh, Clinton Prairie also is a new coach. So, Yeah. And then, North White is just kind of, I mean, this is the definition of a rebuilding year. I mean, they've mm-hmm. got no seniors in there. Coach Heimlich's a great coach, but this is a team that's going through uh, some growing pains right now. Yeah. A couple big games coming up for Rochester as we turn into the new year. Obviously, they'll be at Whitco on January 6th, and uh, they go uh, they host uh, Lewis Cass then on, did I write that down, January 3rd? January 13th. 13th. I, yeah. I thought it was after that. I right. missed the one. Yeah, yeah the, the first game in the New Year's a home game against Plymouth. Plymouth, like Rochester's, right at 500. Yeah. And then at Whitco, and then, then at Logansport at the Berry Bowl. It's a Logansport team that lost to Peru earlier this week. Of course, Rochester's got a win over Peru, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, actually that was Peru's first win of the season, period. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, that big one at home against uh, Lewis Cass. Yep. So on the uh, the boys' side, three and two, kind of a quiet week. They uh, they went to North Miami, got their first conference win of the year. They're one and zero in the conference, and of course, coming up uh, Friday night, they will be headed over to Valley, take on the Vikings in a non-conference matchup. Still. Still hard to say that non-conference matchup with Tiffany Valley. Yeah, uh, the win over North Miami was just a just strange momentum swings in the game. I mean, Tanner Reinerts hit three threes on three consecutive possessions at one point, and Rochester had a seven-point lead. And then all of a sudden, North Miami goes on an 11-0 run, and they lead by four at halftime at 37-33. Um, Jake Riley had 16 at the half, and Lake Musall had 14 at the half. So mm-hmm. The so two thir- we were talking about. 30 of their 37 came from those two guys. Yeah. And then the second half started, and I mean that was not a good. Half. It was not a good half defensively from Rochester. So Rochester went. They played mostly man in the first half, and Coach Malco went to a two-three zone to start the second half. And you're kind of wondering, boy, I don't know, because Musal's a really good shooter, and you're worried he'd just shoot over the top of that. But the, the intensity in the zone was just all much, much better in the second half than the couple possession they tried it in the first half. Musal didn't score at all in the second half. Rochester gets on a 7-0 run. They go 40-37 to 37 and stayed at, It was still kind of close. It was around 45-43. And Rochester goes on another little bit of a run. Owen Prater was fantastic, offensively and defensively. Finished with a career-high 21 points, but almost had an even bigger impact on the defensive end because he gets his hand... He, he's so bothersome on top of that zone. And... You know, they started kind of, they get better player movement also in the, you know, getting some weak side cutters against North Miami zone. And, uh, again, but this was maybe the, probably the best game of Tanner Reinerts' career. And he only had two points against Logansport, 26 big points against North Miami. And, I mean, he not only did he hit five threes, but he, called, he also drove the ball to the basket and scored. And that was a really nice thing to see as well. Yeah. Saw Tanner in uh, the gym there as we were getting ready to go for the girls game uh, at Rochester with North Miami, and he was working with Coach Reinhold, and his shot was looking really good. Yeah, they they put in, they put in a lot of work since yeah. the Logan Sport game. Yeah, to, uh, that you know there, I mean there was there's there was a little bit of, I'm sure there was a little bit of soul searching, but just a lot of hard work in the gym mm-hmm. to get get his shot going and and become become more of a of a factor where he's not just an outside shooter. Mm-hmm. And I mean he had. Some, and I think I think fatigue might have had a little bit of a factor in it as well. Rochester outscored North Miami seventeen to four in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So now traveling to Valley um, on Friday, and this is a Valley team. Well, they beat Rochester forty eight twenty four last year, and this is a Valley team that had a lot. They had a lot more length and strength last year, and I think that's probably still going to be a little bit of a be a bit of a factor this time. It's not going to be as easy for Rochester to score. Uh, but I think it's, it'll be less of a factor this game. Um, can Rochester be able to run the floor against the Valley uh, like they did against North Miami? I'm sure it won't be. A, it certainly won't be as easy. 
Uh, but they're going to have to find that if it comes down to a half-court game, it's just going to be hard to score down in the post. You know, when you've got Stephen Akasi blocking, you know, kind of guarding the rim, so to mm-hmm. speak, protecting the rim. Uh, this is a Valley team that has got off to a slow start but has been improving a lot. Uh, then the other, uh, obviously, Rochester's got to find a way to stop Ian Cooksey, who has just been cooking from the perimeter. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, you know, Riley had 20 against North Miami. Riley from Ro- North Miami had 20 against Rochester. I'd, I'd say Riley's more of a slasher, while Cooksey's maybe more of a just straight up three-point shooter. Mm-hmm. So right again, how much Rochester can, how much zone can Rochester play against Valley? Because again, the fear is that you know Valley will look for, and I'm sure Valley's looking at Rochester zone and looking for seams in that zone where Cooksey can kind of spot up. Yeah. Zebras will be headed to Wawasi on the 29th to take on uh, Wawasi in game one of a four-team tournament that the uh, the other two teams, Fort Wayne Wayne and Fort Wayne Dwinger, so it should be a nice little tournament there. Right. Lou Lefevre is the new coach at Wawasi. He used to be the coach at Providence. He's won six sectional titles in his career. I think he was at North Harrison, so he's back up in, used to be, uh, maybe if you were in this part of the state, maybe you remember him as the coach at Tipton. Um, but he's a very, very good coach. Wawasi got a big win over Warsaw last week, first time they had beaten Warsaw in six years, beat them at the Tiger Den. That's, so this yeah. is, um, they've got the two, uh, Coach Everingham is not there anymore. He's uh, obviously with Coach Lefevre there, but his two sons have stayed behind, Miles and Maddox, and those twins are outstanding players. I think they're juniors now. Uh, this is a good, pretty, very good, uh, much improved Wawa C team. They'll be tough to beat, and then you got Fort Wayne Wayne, who might be the best team in Fort Wayne, and I, I don't make that claim lightly. They've got, I think they've got one or two thousand point scorers already uh, on their team, uh, and then Fort Wayne Dwanger, Coach Kostoff does a great job there. Yeah. Dwanger, he's, uh, I think he's won five sectionals and three regionals in his coaching career. You know, they'll be a good team as well. Yeah, if you're the best, if you're saying they're the best team in Fort Wayne, that's that's a big statement. Yeah, I, I think, mean that that means they are really really good. Right, Snyder, yeah, Snyder's. Better Homestead is well is all, but I think I think Wayne's the best team in the in that SAC conference. Yeah, yep. All right, well, let's take a break here. When we come back, we're going to talk some Argus and Caston on Talking Sports with Val. We'll be right back. RTC is partnering with the Fiber Gaming Network program. If you live in a zip code that RTC Fiber Communications provides service to, you can participate for free. The Fiber Gaming Network is affiliated with eSports and is offering cash prizes for competitions every week. If you have an account, sign in today and register for upcoming events, and if you don't, simply visit www.fibergamingnetwork.com and create a free account to get started. Are you ready to take your home's comfort to the next level? The Insulation Guys can evaluate your attic, walls, basement, and crawl space to determine where insulation can be added or upgraded. Our expert team delivers high quality insulation solutions, not only improving your home's comfort, but also lowering your energy bills. Call us today for a free quote at 574-223-3626 or visit us online at www.theinsulationguys.net. My name is Tasha Mitchell, and I am a commercial lender for Alliance Bank. Behind me is the spreader I currently use to applicate dry fertilizer product. Very unexpectedly did I become a commercial banker. I've only been a commercial banker for about nine months, and with my ag experience, it has really helped me. I would choose Alliance Bank because even though they have seven branches, they are a very community-oriented bank. They give a lot back to the community, and their clients are their top priority. Looking for a better way to incentivize your staff or provide them with custom apparel to boost morale? Allow the Winning Edge to set you up with a custom edge store tailored to your business needs. Whether you need supplies for your fundraiser or shirts with your business logo on them, the Winning Edge can help you set up an online one-stop shop. Call today at 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www thewinningedgeathletics.com. Hi, welcome back here. Talking sports with Val for the last time in 2023. And Val, the Argus Dragons, sitting at 5-8, and eight, but they are 3-0 and oh in the Hoosier Plains Conference. They got a big win last Thursday night at South Bend Career Academy, winning 80-6 to six over the, are they the Trailblazers now? I know they changed, they were the Cobras there for a while, but I think they changed it to Trailblazers. Yeah. 
And then uh, not, not not because I had anything to say with it. I I like cobras. Right, right. I did too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tuesday night they went to New Prairie, and boy, that is just a really really good team up there. They have just steadily increased the the program has just gotten better and better over the last five years. Mm-hmm. They they lose that one thirty to seventy five, setting up a big conference game with Bethany Christian, number five and one A. Coming in at ten and one and two and zero in the conference, that's going to be a big one here tonight. Argus is three and zero in the conference. Bethany Christian's two and zero in the conference. This is going to go a long way to see who wins the conference. Um, Bethany Christian ranked in the top ten in the state in defensive scoring average. I think right around. I think they're number nine. We've talked. I mean, Coach Parson. I know we've, we've shown our admiration for her. She does a great, great job. She's been there for a long time. Yeah. And is really. I mean, she's she so deserved to make it to a state finals last year. Yeah. To, to have her work kind of under the spotlight because this she will be her four hundred and first game. She's two hundred and two hundred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that was interesting when I saw yeah, it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean they've got the, the great guards and Willems and uh, uh, the other. <laughs> yeah, you're going to ask it, me is names. Chup? Is it Chup? And then they've got uh, the other guard. Uh, yeah, anyway, they're a really good team. Yeah. This is a really good defensive team, and how will they stop Samantha Redinger? You know, the thing about the, the South Bend Career Academy game, they went 80-6, to six, and you're probably wondering how much Redinger had. Well, she had 31, but all five starters were in double figures. Yeah. I mean, Barkus was in double figures, Bolenbacher. Um, you know, they're getting contributions from everybody. Um, yeah, I think. You know, Olivia Lead was in double right. figures in that game. Um and so it's not it's not just one player. I mean, they they're getting a lot of kind. Of, Alicia Sarver was in double figures in that win. I think she had thirteen mm-hmm. against South Bend Career Academy. But again, New Prairie is just a different animal. New Prairie is a team that's going to be heavily favored to win their three A sectional. Yeah, they held they held Sam to her lowest uh, point total of the season so yeah, far. Yeah, just eleven. Yeah. So again, we'll see what Sam can do against this defense that will obviously be geared to stop her. But this yeah. Will, this is a. I mean, again, uh, if if Argus quit in the conference, that would be such a big uh, statement that they could make, uh, uh, and a way to bounce back into the New Prairie game. Yeah, as they're uh, you know wrapping up their final season in the Hoosier Plains because they'll be joining the uh, the Hoosier North Conference next year as well. Mm-hmm. So we talked about North Miami, Argus, and the OD are also joining the conference. An interesting uh, little tournament coming up for the Dragons as they head to the Berry Bowl there in Logansport on the thirtieth. Uh, and uh, they'll take on. Um, uh, they they start yeah. off with Northwestern. Right, they get Northwestern yeah. the first game. I think that's what a ten a.m. start on yeah. December thirtieth, and that's Northwestern team will probably have a height advantage. But you know, it'll be interesting to see how Argus's one three one zone stops Northwestern's uh, their point guard Anna Bashir, who I mm-hmm. think leads the leads their team in scoring. Yeah. And I, I looked back through, uh, you know, all the way back through what John Harrell has, and, and I do not see where they've played at the uh, variable before. So that'll be mm. uh, that'll be a fun one. Uh, Logan Sport and um, uh, Wheeler, yeah. the other two teams in that tournament. So, mm-hmm. you know, a chance there for, for uh, uh, Argus as well. Right, to, Logan to Sport's only won only two games all year. I think Wheeler's struggling a little yeah, bit. Yeah, three or four it? games, I think, maybe yeah. for Wheeler. So. Mm-hmm. You know, if they can get by Northwestern, um, it should be a pretty good opportunity there for the Lady Dragons mm-hmm. in that tournament. Sounds like a nice little tournament there at, you know, a little one-day, a little quick mm-hmm. tournament at the at the Berry Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the boys' side of things, the uh, the Dragons are 2-4. and four. Uh, They got a big win versus South Bend Career Academy on Friday, 60-48, to 48, uh, but then dropped one in overtime, 46-49 to Pioneer. Wednesday on the road at Northfield lost forty to forty nine. That Pioneer game, uh, just to get that thing to overtime, was a pretty good accomplishment there for the Dragons because they were way behind in that first half. Right, they were down twenty three to six at halftime, and they were Pioneer's two three zone was giving them all kinds of problems. Really, the difference was what they did on the Argus did on the defensive end came out in kind of a kind of a half court trap, kind of a, a kind of a trapping two three zone with. Um, Luke Stoltz on top, or kind of a, maybe more like a one-three-one with Luke Stoltz on top, and boy, that really got a pioneer out of a rhythm offensively, and got Argus going, kind of got their legs going, and got them got some transition baskets going, and then they just started operating better in the half court. Zane Hellams hit two big threes in the third quarter. They get they get the lead down to eight at the end of three quarters, and then in the fourth quarter they were down thirty-two twenty-four, and then in the fourth quarter. 
again, they just kind of kept plugging away and plugging away. Um, it seemed like you know Pioneer did a nice job on Richard, but then Richard got going in the I think he only had something like two points through the first three quarters, but then he had uh, eight in the fourth quarter, and then on top of that, they started posting up. Uh, again, part of the problem is for the young freshman guards is they've got to they've got to look in the post, they've got to get Luke Stoltz some touches because, mm-hmm. um, and I and I, th- I think that was kind of the, the, the issue because again Pioneer didn't have the height to handle Luke. Stoltz, and then Luke got going. He got. I mean, once Luke got the ball in the block, it was just automatic. I mean, mm-hmm. he was just not going to be stopped. And then finally, I mean, then Luke misses two big free throws. They're not my too late. And Luke misses two free throws, and it's like, oh boy, that's that's the game. But then Pioneer couldn't hit a free throw, and Argus down by three, and the clock is running down, and Luke hits a three pointer from the top of the key to tie the game. Just a second three pointer of the season. Mm-hmm. And that tied it to 39. That sent it in overtime, but then Pioneer scored the first five points of the overtime. And mm-hmm. Argus was behind the whole way. Turnovers were a big stat. 21 turnovers for Argus. Mm. And a lot of them were a lot of them were just kind of lapses in concentration. Yeah. Uh, I talked with Jason Breeden after the game. I said, were they, was that because of Pioneer's defense or just kind of unforced errors on your part? And he really thought it was more unforced errors, just mm-hmm. you know, dropping a pass and it goes out of bounds or Stuff like that, and over there was an over and back call that was just again you know, just a lapse of concentration. So, yeah. frustrating loss, especially because they had played a really nice game the previous night against South Bend Career Academy, mm-hmm. where uh, you know Sean Richard I think went twenty six against South Bend Career Academy the previous yeah. night. Well, that's a big win for them too because it was conference game for them as well. So, they don't have anything going on uh, over Christmas break, so they are off until January. So yeah. we'll pick back up with the Dragons when we get back. Right. I'd be curious to see how the freshmen are holding up. If, if you haven't watched Argus, they play about six kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, they start two freshmen, and then their sixth man is also a freshman, and Zane yeah. Hellams. Yeah. Uh, Makai Austin and, and uh, Kenyon Belden are the two freshmen who start. Mm-hmm. Um, all three of the freshmen can shoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Belden's shot is probably needs the most work of the three, but he, he can shoot it a little bit. But Kenyon's, Kenyon's going to be more just more of an all-around. He's, he's, just, he's a little raw. But he's just an all-around athlete, yeah. and it's, he's he's going to be a very good player in time. Um, again, Sean Richard does so much for this team because he can he can score it, he can pass it, he can handle it, mm-hmm. and you you see what Luke did. I mean, he he can he's just such a factor on both ends. Yeah, but I mean, he he played himself almost to the point of exhaustion. I mean, because he again he was on top of that pressing defense they had. In addition to all the points he scored, yeah, he had twenty one. He had twenty one points and eleven rebounds. Yeah, the Caston boys uh, setting at two and four, zero and one in the conference. They lost at Knox last Friday, forty two fifty seven. They haven't had a whole lot of games. Uh, they don't play again until the twenty seventh, when they open up the uh, play at the Miami County tournament. They will face uh, McConaughey. And uh, right. you know, tournaments at Peru this year, by the way. Yeah, and I, I was talking to Lane. I'm like, what is the over and under on a McConaughey cast in game as far as number of three shot? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking forty, and I might take the over on that. Maybe, I mean, yeah. those two teams, they live and die from that three point line. Right. I, I'm, I, I, my head. I'm kind of scratching my head looking at this cast and boys team. I don't know what to make of it. Their defensive scoring average is down from 52 last year down to 42 this year. Mm-hmm. If you told me they'd be their defensive average would be 42, I think, and then you told me what their record would be, I'd say four and two, five and one. Mm-hmm. Yet they're only two and four. That Frontier loss still, I'm, I, I don't understand how they lost to Frontier. I mean, mm-hmm. I thought they played well. If you told me they'd hold Frontier to 32 points, I thought they'd win the game. Um, so I'm. <laughs> Not sure what to make of this team. I mean, they they play the two wins they they've got against Lakeland Christian and Pioneer. They they dominated both of those games, mm-hmm. but they they've just struggled to win a close one. Now they play, you know, now that now they've got McConaughey coming up, who will play at a million miles an hour. And McConaughey averages seventy four a game, mm-hmm. so they've got to they've got to somehow keep McConaughey keep keep the game under the speed limit somehow. <laughs> right, um, easier said than done. <laughs> right, uh, you know, again, I mean, Caleb Stinson's playing well. Talon Zider's doing, I mean, you can count on him to score in double figures. Hook has, you know, really made an impact as a freshman. Grant Yadon's been coming on. Uh, but, you know, they, they go out to Knox, and they lose to Knox by 15. And then, you know, Knox is a team that, uh, they, they might be kind of a quiet contender. I mean, yeah, I, I know yeah. everybody's talking, again, they got up to a, again, we don't know a whole lot about Knox because their football 
in a great football season. So we haven't played as many games, but they've yeah. got a kid named Schwant who's not a football player, who's their post. And I think he can be. I think he gave Caston some problems there in the post. I again, I I I still think with Caston, I think you've got to be patient for this team because I think, you know, again, the sectional's at home this year for Caston. It's not a not a really tough sectional, but again, they've already lost to Frontier, so I, it's going to be a dogfight. Every game's going to be a dogfight. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they, they lost to uh, Frontier twice last year, too. Right. Caston's schedule is such that it will prepare them well for the postseason. Yeah. And if they keep if they keep playing this level of defense, I think they'll be fine. I don't think they're going to get out physical too much. Maybe, get, now again, McConaughey is a different story, right, but right. I don't think they're going to get out physical too much in the Hoosier North. Yeah, it's hard for them to get a rhythm with just the, the games being so sporadic like they have been. I yeah. mean, you know, you're only playing one game here, one game there, and... Right, it's just it's just hard to really find out who are they. Right, and again, yeah. two of their again two of their four losses are in overtime to Lewis Cass and uh, Carroll. Mm-hmm. And I said Carroll in overtime. There's nothing to be ashamed of about that game. Right, on the road at Carroll, but then you come back the next night and lay an egg against Frontier. That's where you're like, hmm, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, but again, the, the defense, which was my concern at the start of the year, they they're approved. Right, right. So I'm 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 a little I'm a little scratching my head here. I, yeah. I think this te- I think good days are ahead for this team if they keep playing like this defensively, though. Yeah, yeah. The girls sitting at number two still in Class One A, twelve and 5 and zero in the conference. They got the win at Knox on Friday, forty to twenty two. Go to one and ten Frontier tonight, and then of course they open up play the same day. Uh, versus McConaughey at Peru with the Miami County uh, invite. So a little bit, you know, we know who this girls' basketball team is. How many undefeated teams are there in the state? Trivia question. Uh, I thought you said last night six or eight. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, it's down to six. Six. Uh, well, you know, Western is one of them, and Rensselaer is one of them, and mm-hmm. Caston is one of them too. And uh, where does Caston rank in the state in terms of defensive scoring average? Two. They're number one now. Number one now. Twenty six. Okay. Uh, Indianapolis Heron was down. Was there, but Heron had a couple of gave up a couple fifties mm-hmm. last week, and so yeah, Caston's number one at twenty six point three. This is a team that they go they they go the extra mile defensively to help. I mean to help each other out. Mm-hmm. That was a Knox team that was playing pretty good offense, <laughs> right? And they held them to twenty two points. Uh, that's a three A team. Uh, this is a yeah. Team they were putting fifty plus up easily a lot of games. Yeah, mm-hmm. and had really been kind of picking up the tempo too, mm-hmm. and they just could not get anything going. And again against Cast, and you know you look at them and it's like who are you gonna, who are you going to pick on defensively? <laughs> there isn't anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean because their their physicality and their length and their and they understand help side principles and they're but also they're a really good zone team, so they communicate. I mean. So how do you score against this team? I I, I don't know. And you you can't po- you can't really well, post up. Yeah, a lot of a lot of teams have you struggle with that question. How do you score against this team? I mean, you can't really post anybody up against them, <laughs> right? I mean, good luck with that. Yeah. And you can't. They can't even get into their offense. I guess you just hope you can get get a hot shooting night. But that's. I mean, again, that's that's not easy. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that was and so. Again, you, you knew they would be ready to go against Knox after the Pioneer game because they had lost to Knox two years ago. In fact, that was still the last time they lost a conference game, December sixteenth, twenty twenty one, a little mm-hmm. over two years ago. Yeah, and a lot different Knox team too at that point. I mean, when you when you had three, uh, I don't know if they still had three six footers, uh, you know, two years ago. But uh, at one point they had three six footers in the starting lineup. Yeah, I mean that was just a, a tremendous Knox team, but. Um, yeah, I mean this Caston team, and you guys are you and Randy are going to be doing that game tonight against uh, with Frontier. Uh, you know, Clinton Central held Frontier to five points. I don't know if uh, if they'll score five points against Caston or not. I mean, uh, just a, a dominating defensive team, and uh, you know they just uh, like you said, where are the where are the holes in this team? Yeah, I, I don't think they have any. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe maybe if you get down to number eight, if you have to, you know, if you somehow get them into foul trouble and you have to get deep into the you know into the bench maybe you can start finding a weakness but when is that going to happen yeah i mean they're just so strong addison simpleman's playing just fantastic oh. basketball i mean yeah. she had another big game against knox after she had the with the 27 against pioneer mm-hmm. and she she was sick that that game so mm-hmm. uh so they're not totally dependent on, on scales but i mean with those two scoring and then you get you know the contributions from the others, whether it be 
you know, you get a couple three pointers a game from Harsh and six to eight points a game from Hinderleiter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I've said it before. Annie Harsh would be a number two option on on most one A teams. Yeah. And she's number four or number five on this team because they just have so many weapons in front of her. You yeah. Know, Macy yeah. Hinderleiter is another one that, you know, she could score. 15 a game if, if they needed her to, but, you know, she does what they need her to. And, of course, Maddie Douglas, who has just been a fire plug defensively mm-hmm. and, you know, has also been contributing, in about, you know, she obviously used the 23-point game against Argus. That may be, I don't know, if, again, you can't expect that from her every game, but you can expect about 8 to 10 every game and yeah. and occasionally double figure, you know, more, even more than that. So, mm-hmm. again, playing really well. Yep. Looking forward to... Uh, but I'm looking forward to that McConaughey game, which is the first round of the Miami County yeah. invite, because who can... You know, could McCon- you know McConaughey is just a great street three-point shooting team mm-hmm. with Miranda Stoll. I mean, could they get hot and stay in a, and stay in a game against Caston? Yeah. And then a possible uh, matchup with North Miami in the, in the championship. Right. Who beat know. them the last time they played them. Yeah. So... All right, let's take another break here. When we come back, we'll talk some Cavaliers and Panthers on Talking Sports with Val. Evans Agency is here to match you with the best insurance solutions that fit your needs. Whether you need coverage for home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency will make sure you have the protection you need no matter what life throws your way. With a heart and a hand for friendship, Evans Agency is here for you. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Here at Timbercrest Senior Living Community, residents and independent living are able to enjoy an active lifestyle and a beautiful campus. With plenty of activities, including walking and biking paths, fitness classes and social events, there's always something for residents to engage in to benefit their mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. Contact us today to schedule a tour and discover the active lifestyle and beautiful campus our residents enjoy every day. Say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrien Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrien Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrienagsolutions.com to see how Nutrien can help you. New Holland Rochester knows that farmers need equipment they can trust and rely on. That's why for over 125 years, New Holland has been innovating to develop the best and most sustainable products available for our customers. Check out our full fleet that includes our lineup of small compact tractors online at www.NewHollandRochester.com or stop in at one of our locations in Rochester or Logansport to see how we can serve you. Welcome back here talking sports with Val and uh, Let's talk a little Culver community. The girls' basketball team, 4-10, and 1-3 and three in the conference. Uh, tough loss to the Blue Jays' conference game, 19-46, to 46, last Thursday. But they followed that up with a win on the road at South Bend Career Academy, 57-5. Uh, to 5. They got the win there on the road and uh, sitting at 4-10. and 10. Yeah, um, the North Judson team, they're pretty strong defensively. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're maybe not, they're not at Caston's level, but... They're pretty tough. They're pretty um, kind of physical and kind of long and athletic and really held down uh, Culver that, that 46-19 game. I saw some of the video that Culver just had trouble kind of getting into their offense, getting any kind of offensive rhythm going, um, but obviously played a lot better against South Bend Career Academy the following night, 57-5, to and uh, 21 points, I think, in that game for Grace Sieber. Yeah. They're a little banged up, so a little time off here. They don't play again until January 4th, but uh, unfortunately for them, it's Caston that's coming to town on the 4th. But uh, hopefully they can get uh, get a little healthier. Yeah, I, I know Amaya Williams has been playing banged up, and the, you know, Brianna Schlemmer was hurt for a while. So, yeah, hopefully they'll be just a lot healthier. They, this is a team that probably didn't need to play a holiday tournament and probably can use just the time off. Yeah. On the uh, on the boys side, the uh, Cavaliers doing really good. Five and two on the young season for them. One and one in the conference. 
they got a, a big win versus South Bend Trinity, 46-26. Um, and they're going to be headed to 4-1 and Washington Township Friday night. Uh, talk a little bit about the Cavs. I mean, uh, Jack I know you Rogers said, again. Yes, 20, Jack Rogers again. 25 points against Trinity Greenlaw and against – 25 points against a team that plays pretty slow style. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like there were a ton of possessions in that game. So for yeah. him to score 25, they kind of have a big three with Rodgers, Guasp, and Height. Mm-hmm. David Height's been playing great basketball. I mean, he's you can tell he's put a lot of work into his game since over the offseason. He's handling it. Mm-hmm. He's almost like having a second or third point guard out, out there on the court. And he can score better. He's, he's just – you can also tell he spent a lot of time in the weight room as well. Because he's really strong. I mean, he's, he's like strong and kind of a combination of strong and quick. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really like what I see from him. And then, you know, Joe, Jonas McEwen doesn't handle it. There doesn't score very much, but he handles it really well. So with Rodgers and Jonas McEwen and Hyde, you got three guys who can handle the ball very well. So there's no turn it off. It's not like they're just giving the ball away. And because they're not turning it over very well, I mean, they're, they, they, make them, they, they maximize their possessions. Mm-hmm. And they're five and two now. Defensively, you know, we'll see. You know, it's one thing to hold Trinity Greenlaw to twenty six. We'll see how they do tomorrow night at Washington Township. Because one thing I know about, I don't know a whole ton about Washington Township. I know they they're known for having a lot of size. Okay. So this is going to challenge you know them because again, this isn't the biggest Culver team. I know Ethan Binion and and Logan Caudill. I mean, they're they're not. They're both right around 6'3", mm-hmm. but they're not really bulky guys. And so I'll be curious to see if Washington Township tries to get the ball in the post. Coach Bowersock is the coach at Washington Township. He was a longtime assistant at North Judson and now at Washington Township. So this is, yeah, I, this is a good timing for this game. I'm really curious to see how Culver attacks it. I think, we'll, I think we'll see if they can win this game. I think that will kind of give us an idea whether they can compete in the in the Hoosier North. I don't think this Hoosier North race is over yet. Yeah, yeah. There's there's some interesting uh, matchups coming up next right. year. Right, I think people are looking at the two Stark County teams with Judson and Knox. As, mm-hmm. I mean, Judson Judson's a good basketball team. I, I think Marshall County is going to have some say in it too. Triton and LaVille, I, I think are yeah. going to you know they're going to be in the mix as well. Right, right. So um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Yeah, yeah. You know, Judson lost a close win to Morgan non conference game to Morgan Township. That was a Morgan Township team that took Valley down to the wire. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think that, that there's a lot more to be said in this Hoosier North race moving forward. Uh, what's interesting, if you're a Culver fan, is if you look at the Class 1A polls this week, eight of the top ten teams are in the south. Mm-hmm. The two teams that are in the north, Triton, who's number six, mm-hmm. and Marquette Catholic, who's number seven. And, of course, both of those teams are in Culver's sectional. Yeah, and if you're Triton, are you worried because you just picked up your first loss and it was a really beat down by Jimtown? Yeah. I mean... That wasn't even a close game at all. I mean, right, Triton. I saw the box score. Triton didn't have anybody in double figures in yeah, that game. Yeah. So I don't know if Coach Groves is worried about that, or maybe Jimtown's just that good. I don't know much about Jimtown this year, but um, I, I think I don't think Triton had played the toughest schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right. there's a lot more to be said. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this Culver team develops. I, mm-hmm. I it just stinks that we didn't get to see Rogers play on Thanksgiving Eve. I'm right. really can't wait to see him play in person eventually. Yep. Uh, Pioneer girls basketball team. This uh, the young squad, uh, four and nine. Uh, boy, just a really rough stretch of games. I mean, from uh, the casting game on the twelfth till uh, Tuesday night, they played five games in seven days. Back to back conference games with uh, Laville and Triton. I think the Laville game is is one that uh, you know Coach Barry probably shaking his head a little bit. You know, you mm-hmm. lead twenty two twenty one with five minutes to go, and Laville goes on an eleven zero run to finish the game and win by ten. I mean, that's uh, that's a tough one to swallow. And you know, Triton comes in the next night. They played well for a quarter and a half or so mm-hmm. against Triton, but uh, you know, Addison Veers. I mean, she's just she's just a beast. Yeah. I mean the the defense. I was really impressed with the Triton defense overall, team defense, and and Veers got going, and um, you know she had a big night there, and they ended up winning by twenty one. Right. I, I like the other girl on Triton's team. I like is Holly, mm-hmm. who's only a sophomore, and then I, uh, Sydney King has been playing pretty well for them too. Mm-hmm. We knew about Veers and Faulkner, but I think the, the supporting cast has done a nice job there. Triton just ran in, Triton just ran into their own really tough kind of scheduling. 
mm-hmm. thing where they had to play Valley and Elkhart Christian and cast in like a four day span. Yeah. And, you know, for, for Pioneer, you know, they went three games last week and couldn't get out of the 20s. I mean, you're not going to win a lot of games when you're scoring in the 20s. Right, and Gracie Hopper got hurt, and that didn't help mm-hmm. uh, either. Uh, part of it, too, was I think Pioneer just they couldn't get close to the basket. Mm-hmm. They just became this jump-shooting team, and it's just hard to consistently put up points that way. Yeah. Did get a win on the road Monday night and uh, at Frankfurt in the first game of the uh, Delphi Kitchen Classic. Uh, Frankfurt has not won a game. They uh, Pioneer gets the win, forty-eight fourteen over the Hot Dogs. Right, it was fourteen to nothing after the first quarter. Mm-hmm. So yeah, right, and even the, right, uh, and in that game, uh, I, I think starting to get more kids scoring. Yeah, and Lois, just, Lois Lair really came out in that game, and, and hopefully we can keep her going with, uh, I mean, she had 15 points in that game and, mm-hmm. and hit, I think, three threes. And uh, she's one that, uh, you know, obviously needs to score. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you're only scoring in the 20s, you need to get more, more girls involved. Right, and she could impact the game defensively. Yeah. And if you can get turnover, she can get steals, and that can get you some fast break baskets. So you're mm-hmm. not just struggling to score in the half court as much. Yeah. Uh, and then the uh, the fifth game of that stretch, they went to Delphi in the semifinal and uh, took on the host uh, Delphi Oracles. Ended up losing that one 44-55. But uh, I guess, I mean, start out, you're up 9-4. to 9-3, N- to three, actually, yeah. 9-3, to three and, and, you know, then Delphi goes on like a 13-1 to one run and just – stretches of uh, of time where you can't put the ball in the basket right in the problem jenna roth is delphi's best player and she got in foul trouble and then the pickering girl lacy pickering their other guard she got in foul trouble and pioneer couldn't make hay mm-hmm. during that period of time and in fact delphi went on a run and pioneer was down by six at the half and really again but the problem of course was that mckenna stricker got in foul trouble too mm-hmm. But being down by six, you just felt like they maybe let an opportunity slip away. And then Delphi goes on a 12-3 to run to start the second half, and it goes from a six-point deficit to a 15-point deficit. And that was yeah. essentially the game because, it's, it's, again, it's a Pioneer team that struggles to score. Having said that, Pioneer had more balanced scoring in this game. Mia McKegg led the way with 11. She was the only player in double figures. She had a shot at the buzzer to get to 11. Mm. McKenna Stricker had nine, even though she was in foul trouble most of the game. And then Layer had eight. Jocelyn Kane had seven, mm-hmm. and Jocelyn Kane's a girl. Apparently, she uh, talking with Coach Barry afterwards. She she had an illness early in the in the season. Yeah, she missed a good week of uh, right around the Cass County tournament, right, and that yeah. affected her conditioning. Mm-hmm. But you can see what she provides to the team, and with her mm-hmm. and Layer and Stricker and McKay. Now you've got four girls who can play guard, who could handle it to various extents. Again, I don't know if you'd call Kane a point. You know, Layer Layer's probably a better ball handler than Kane, just because Kane's just so inexperienced. But when you've got four girls with, and with a decent amount of quickness and strength, mm-hmm. I think you're starting to see the team kind of uh, some some more chemistry with the team. Yeah. Unfortunately, the problem is that Hopper's injured, and she's out at least two more weeks. Yeah, I really like Hannah Ziegler. You know, she's a she's a good young player on the in mm-hmm. the post for them as well. I yeah. think uh, she's she's got a really uh, really good mind for the game. Yeah, just um, keep keep working on those finishing moves in the mm-hmm, post. I think yeah. that that will really come in handy. Yeah. And, and Jocelyn Kane, I mean, you saw that in that game against Delphi. I mean, she is lightning quick. Yeah, lightning quick. She's not overly tall, probably about five foot. If she's at, if if five foot. Yeah, I but mean, she's uh, smaller than Layer. On Layer is what five two, five two ish. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know those two freshman guards. I mean, they're they've really uh, really helped this team and. Like I said, I think you, you throw these kids together, give them a summer, and, and let them work together. I, I think that uh, you might have something. Right. So, But as for the current uh, times, they got a game with North Montgomery at 10 a.m. on Saturday at mm-hmm. Delphi. Uh, again, this I know North Montgomery had a girl at five threes against Winnemac last night, so defending the perimeter is going to be big in this game. I think, I think North Montgomery is going to shoot a lot of threes. Yeah. And, you know, those 10 a.m. Saturday games are always interesting. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, who's awake? Who's going to show up? Who's yeah. going to play? Mm-hmm. Um, seen a lot of those in AAU. I mean, they can they can be rough. So yeah, and that'll be it for uh, for the girls until after uh, after Christmas. And 
um, after New Year's, actually, and they've got a really busy January. Of course, you know, the first two games of the year got pushed back into late January with uh, Tri-County and Southwood, so mm-hmm. you throw that on top of an already busy January schedule for Pioneer because they're so backloaded anyway. Yeah, uh, they because of Pioneer's volleyball success. Yeah, yeah. They, they normally backload that schedule anyway, so there's only two games that got moved, but, uh, boy, a lot of games coming up in January for the Panthers. Right, right. So it'll be interesting. They... You know, coming right out of the gate, they got to uh, go to Frontier and possibly, you know, it's an opportunity to get a win. And but uh, should be favored know, in that game. Yeah. yeah, they got games with Argus and you mm-hmm. know on the road at Argus, and so there's there's some uh, you know West Central is another game that's on their schedule coming up. They've they've been playing really good as of late. Right, West Central is one of the more improved teams. Yeah, in the mm-hmm. Midwest Conference. So on the boys' side, two and five, we talked about that game uh, with uh, that win at Argus. Uh, Friday night, they lost in the second part of that back-to-back with LaVille, 38-54. And, um, you know, LaVille just has the, you know, Zarnecki and Plummer and... Um, Good. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just have that big three that, you know, kind of going up against, uh, you know, kind of a, a big 1.2, <laughs> you know, with uh, with Pioneer, obviously, McKeg, but... Still trying to develop some of those younger players for the Panthers. Right, and I went to the game on Saturday night when they won at Argus in overtime, and that was a terrific win. And they were really, again, I was curious to see how they would bounce back. Well, they were they were really they were really ready to play. They were they really did a nice job. They held Argus's Sean Richard to eleven points. That was a season low for Richard, who I think had a twenty six the previous night uh, in their previous game. So uh, you know it's a it's a pioneer team. I think um, Coach McKeg, I think, has been kind of playing around with the lineups a little bit. I think part of it too is, you know, now that Mike Rands is healthy, that that gives him a bench option. Mm-hmm. You can play with Drew McKeg and with Braden Erickson and with um, Ryland Toloza and with Luke Blackman. You can almost play like a four guard lineup. We talked about. Pioneers guards on the girls' side. They can play kind of a four-guard lineup on the boys' side as well. And then with Lucas Perry in the post, again, he's kind of an undersized post, but he competes down there. Mm-hmm. And so I think he's been helping out a lot. And then, again, you you bring in Rands off the bench, and that's another guard. Mm-hmm. So they can, they can almost play five guards if they want. And, you know, talking with Coach McKeg, he was like, you know, everybody's so worried about, you know, how, how we're going to match up against other teams' height. They should be worried about how they match up against our guards because yeah. you play a team with a bunch of guards like that, it's tough and, to play against. And Pioneer only had 12 turnovers in an overtime game against Darius, So, And it's not unheard of to see Pioneer play that way. I mean, a couple of years ago with uh, Ezra and Adai, I mean, they, they played basically uh, a five-guard lineup then, even though Adai was technically their post. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, right. Now, Argus threw kind of, a, kind, of a, kind of a blitzing, trapping type of defense, kind of a half-court trap. And it did give Pioneer some problems, but Pioneer again only had twelve turnovers. I think they, I mean they, they did. I mean yeah, they com- committed a few turnovers, but they also got some buckets off off press breakers where they were really moved the ball well and they really knew what they wanted to do against it. So I think that's kind of a work in progress. Um, yeah, I mean, and then he, you know you got a kid who could shoot off the bench and Noah Miller. Uh, you know I mentioned Blackman. Um, yeah, I think this is a team that's. Uh, and again, I think they've been dealing with some of the in- some injuries in the freshman class. So, I-, I like I like the direction of this team, and I I know, you know, two and five is not the record they like to see to have. I'd be curious to see how they do against Delphi, mm-hmm. uh, playing them uh, tonight, mm-hmm. and see how they do in that in the consolation round of the, of the Indiana Kitchen Classic. Yeah, they lost on Monday to Frankfurt thirty nine seventy two, which uh, put them into the consolation round. Taking on one and seven Delphi, so yeah, and that was their third game in four days, and you're playing at Case Arena on a Monday night. Um, that w- that was a Frankfurt team that had just picked up their first win of the season the night before. Didn't look like a one win team to me. Yeah, they were really good. I mean, yeah, you normally you think of a one win team, and you're like, okay, they're probably not that great, but right, they looked like a really. I know. Good. Fra- I know Frankfurt had a coaching change during the off season, so maybe they were struggling from a kind of a chemistry standpoint. Yeah. Or kind of a cohesiveness standpoint, but I think that yeah, I, I know that I knew they were athletic. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very fast, and yeah. they play uh, above the rim a lot. So. Yeah. 
Um, so again, it's, it's a pioneer team. You know, to, you know, you lose a kid like Caleb Sweet to graduation. I think mean, they were they were looking for their own chemistry issue, kind of developing their own chemistry. But I think getting there, yeah. I think maybe more of a guard oriented team this year. Yeah. But again, with Erickson and Miller, you've got two good three, and McKay, you've got three kids who can shoot the three, so you can spread the floor a bit. Yeah. And I, I know Mike Aranz, obviously, you know, was dinged up coming out of football season, and and so now he's getting healthy and. Like you said, I think he's going to add a, a really good uh, piece to that puzzle. It looks like he's gained a couple inches in height, and he's also strong. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's... You can't play quarterback for Coach Barry if you're not a, yeah. a strong kid. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's 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 bright days ahead for this team. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how they develop and as the season goes on. All right, that'll do it uh, for Culver and Pioneer. We'll take another Want to quick... give a shout-out to Cohen Markley, 113-pound wrestler from Culver. Okay. Seventh place at the McKee Invite. Okay. I wanted to give a shout out to Hayden Loot from Culver, swimmer, won the 200 IM and the 500 free against Rochester on Monday. She grew up in Rochester, yeah. swam with the Rochester Royals growing up, now goes to Culver. Really okay. good swimmer. Yeah. I mean, she can swim on anybody's team in the area. Yeah. Okay. And Arwen Cornblith won the 100 breaststroke. Yeah. She was kind of the one that uh, got the whole thing started a little bit with uh, with Culver swimming. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Culver goes to that. The, I was talking with Coach um, Lori Simpson the other day. Um, they get picked up at school at 5 a.m., five days a week. They take a bus to the Aquatic Center in Plymouth mm-hmm. for their morning practice. It starts at 5.30. Yeah, at the Bardwell. At the Bardwell yeah, Aquatic there. Center, which is a, supposedly it's beautiful there. Yeah, They so just it's, built it. Yeah, it's only a couple years old, yeah. right there by the Lifeplex. Yeah, right by the Lifeplex. Lori, mm-hmm. Lori Simpson actually works there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, supposedly it's beautiful. And so mm-hmm. I want to give a shout to those kids. If they're getting... They get to school at 5 a.m. five days a week. You deserve a lot of credit. I mean, <laughs> right? and it just, it just four girls. That's yeah. all they have. So yeah. just those four. So kudos to them. The original plans when they built the high school at Culver was to have a pool under the, under the gym floor. Really? Yeah, and they ended up taking it out. So okay. they, they originally had plans for a, a mm. pool in that uh, gym. But okay. Probably a good thing. I mean, the the pool water i mean it's just so caustic with the chlorine and everything i i could imagine that would cause a lot of issues mm-hmm. all right let's take another break when we get back we'll finish up talking about uh tiffany valley and the winnemac warriors on talking sports with val mike anderson in rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels from coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car mike anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over $50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Welcome back here to Talking Sports with Val in our last segment of 2023 as we get uh, through this one here. Let's talk some uh, Tip New Valley girls basketball setting at 11-1 and one on the year. 
Big win on the road last Thursday against the Winnemac Warriors, 44-30. to uh, Held a Winnemac team that averages right around, around 50 a game and held them to 30. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Valley has an okay defense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we talk about Caston's defense. I think Valley's ranked in the top 20 or 25 in the state, mm-hmm. allowing 32 points a game against their schedule. Right. They're a darn good defensive team as well. Yeah. Uh, they've got a uh, uh, Friday and Saturday tournament coming up. This is a big one at Carroll. Uh, take on Western. Western is the one in the 11-1 and one for Valley. Mm-hmm. They lost to the Western uh, Panthers back in November 37-44. So another chance to take on Western here coming up on Friday. Right, and I was at that first Western game when they played in Rusheville. That game was tied 36-36 with about four minutes to go in the game, and Western outscored them 8-1 to one to close out the game. Mm-hmm. That's a Western team that averaged, I think, around, I think in the upper 50s or low 60s, mm-hmm. and they held them to 44. Yeah. That was the second game of a back-to-back for both teams that night. Now they face in a holiday tournament. Valley hasn't played in over a week. Western hasn't played in over a week. Mm-hmm. So this will be a totally different game, I think. Uh, when you talk about Western, they've got two post players. Um uh, the Walden girl comes off the is the post player comes off the bench and she's a really good player. They don't lose anything when they bring her in. The York girl, who's their point guard, she is tough as nails. Mm-hmm. I mean, she is strong with the ball. Uh, her and Egolf, that's going to be a great matchup. Um, again, uh, hopefully Gabby Gonzalez will be back. She didn't play in that first. She she did play in that first game, but she's been kind of out um, since. Uh, she didn't play in the win over Winnemac, so hopefully they can get Gabby back. Mm-hmm. She's been out for what about? Uh, um, three or three, four three, weeks. Yeah, three yeah. or four weeks now. Because she, yeah. uh, she got hurt in the John Glenn game, which was about a week before Thanksgiving. So hmm. hopefully they can get Gabby back because uh, you need to be able to pressure their guards. The Smith girl uh, is really good um, for for Western. Again, they're they're only six undefeated teams, and Western's one of them. They're they're undefeated for a reason. Yeah, they are tough as nails. They can they can score from they can shoot from the outside, but they can post up and score. They can score in transition. Uh, they're 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 tough. They're very tough, and I'll be curious to see uh, what Valley does to try and counter them. Chesney Miller had 14 in that game against Winnemac. She, she's gradually increasing her scoring more and more. It's gonna be key because I mean I don't know if anybody can just one person can pick up where what Macy Peterson what you're losing with Macy Peterson's injury, but every mm-hmm. everybody can score a couple more baskets mm-hmm. that can help out a little bit. And obviously Gabby's gonna play a role in that as well. Yeah. Really good lineup here for this uh, tournament at Carroll. You got Valley taking on Western. You got Rivington Park, uh, Riverton Park taking on Covenant Christian, Universal uh, University taking on Carroll, and then Lewis Cass taking on Western Boone. So whoever comes out of this thing, uh, you know, with uh, three wins is going to be uh, well tested. Right. I know Western already has a win. Not only do they have a win over Valley, they also have a win over Carroll. Um. You know, I, I'm thinking Carroll probably makes it out of the bottom half of the bracket into the championship game. The Lewis Cass will have something to say. Right, it's not going to be Lewis easy. Lewis Cass is ten and one. I know uh, uh, Carroll is they're ranked number six in class two A. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be a really good tournament. I think uh, uh, Valley will be better off for it. Uh, Lewis he, Cass's only loss is to Caston. It's to Caston, mm-hmm. yeah. So and they won I think five in a row since that. So mm-hmm. I think Lewis Cass will be favored against Western Boone. A, a, a Carroll Lewis Cass game in the Semifinals is potentially intriguing. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But wow, this Valley Western game is—you know—right off the bat, we're going to have our eye on this while we're while, while we're watching the Rochester Valley Boys game. We're going to keep keeping our eye on the Valley Girls and how they're doing against Western. Yeah. So they'll play one one game on Friday, two games on Saturday. That's correct. Yeah. So I mean, that's going to be a lot of a lot of basketball being played there at Carroll over the next uh, two days. Yeah, they're going to be running two gyms there, from mm-hmm. what I can tell. Yeah. So. Should be a good one. That uh, yeah. that'll be uh, that'll be a big uh, big test for whoever can come out of that one and uh, see how Valley can do against a uh, super tough Western team. Yeah, I mean Kelsey Cox is going to have to stay out of foul trouble against Western. Yeah. she is, and you, you can tell she's she's going to be someone you can really pick up her scoring. She and she and Carly Steiner are both going to have to pick up, stay out of foul trouble. I think. You know, Western Western uh, knocked Valley out of the unbeaten ranks back in November. Can they return the favor to Western? Yeah. <laughs> that would be intriguing. Yeah. Misty Oliver doing a great job at Western, by the way. I remember mm-hmm. her when she was an assistant coach at Rochester. Mm-hmm. Very happy for her. Yeah. On the boys' side of things, like you said, they're they're kind of uh, starting to uh, figure it out. Obviously, 
you know, new pieces. Uh, Riley Shepard is out, so then you got to find out, you know, who's going to be your scorers. Uh, obviously, you know what you have with Stephen Acasi, but trying to trying to find out yeah. what you have around him and right. I, I don't know if you'd call this growing pains, but again, without Shepard, it's just a, they're just going to have to adjust. Mm-hmm. We don't th- we don't expect him to play against Rochester. I guess I wouldn't be shocked. But we're thinking more likely that Delta tournament next week mm-hmm. uh, is what Coach Luce has told us. Uh, you know, again, they had that very tough loss at Peru in overtime, fifty-five, fifty-one, mm-hmm. uh, a game in which they just, you know, they made some mistakes in the overtime that really cost them. Uh, you know, um, Davis Cowan is coming along, but again, he's a, he's a young player; he's just a sophomore, and he. He's having to lead the team, and he's making some kind of young player mistakes here. But Cooksey has come on, uh, They've and, and then Akasi is just, uh, you're gonna ha- again, his rebounding has been just so crucial to their success, uh, as well as his scoring. And then it's kind of word of the other parts. You know, Kyler Johnson was banged up a little bit earlier in the year, so if they can get him healthy, that would be good. But Deion... You know, they, they had the tough loss to Peru, then they bounced back and got a nice win at Wheeler on Saturday. Had to play at Peru Friday, and they had to play at Wheeler Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. I mean, barely got any sleep. <laughs> but then they go and they win 80-29 to 29 at Wheeler. And DeAndre, not only did they get double figures from Akasi and Cooksey, but DeAndre, Ham, DeAndre Hamilton scores 11. Mm-hmm. So get, if they can get him some scoring, that will be help out. And then the, the other kid is really coming along is Blaine Sheets. I think Blaine Sheets is going to do for this year's Valley team what Dylan Neese did last year. Okay. Kind of the dirty work, get mm-hmm. your elbows dirty, get down on the floor. And he's, you can tell that he, I, I saw him play earlier this year, you can tell he's being a little, like a little more uh, uh, outgoing. He's kind of communicating really well on the defensive end. He's gotten a lot more physical. And he's going to help out in the front court, and he's going to help, I think, alleviate some of the pressure from Akasi. Yeah, and and Johnson. So they host Rochester on Friday, as we talked about earlier, and then they go to uh, Delta on Wednesday, taking on Muncie Central in the first game of that tournament down there. Yeah, and I'm you know from Valley, I'm looking at this Rochester game from Valley standpoint. I mean, uh, they've got to find they've got to find a way to contain Drew Bowers off the dribble. You know, Drew only had six. You know, it was interesting about Rochester; they scored seventy four against North Miami. Drew Bowers only had six. Mm-hmm. Which was, it was odd because the Logansport game, Rochester scored, what, 43, and Drew had 23. Mm-hmm. So it went from Drew kind of carrying the offense to Drew just being kind of playing more of a distributor role. Right. Um, this is, I mean, we know from Valley's standpoint they're going to be more physical, but they've got to be able to contain Rochester in transition. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Valley's got, to, you know, again, when Valley commits turnovers, that's when they've been vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And uh, so will Rochester try and maybe bring the heat defensively, maybe try some half court trap, and try and get Valley out of their offense. Because yeah. once Acosta gets the ball in the post, Rochester can't really do much to stop that. Right, right. Yeah, they got to try and find a way to keep that from happening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, now that, especially with Xavier Vance injured, I think mm-hmm. this is Rochester will really miss X for this game, mm-hmm. this particular game. Right. So on uh, on to Winnemac, the uh, girls but, basketball. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that Delta tournament, that's a hell of a tournament, too. They play Muncie Central in the first game. Mm-hmm. Then maybe Fort Wayne could get a rematch with Fort Wayne Southside, who they lost to earlier in the year. Mm-hmm. In the, they played two games on the 27th and one game on the 28th. Okay. And So that's an eight-teamer as well? That's an eight-teamer as well. Okay. And the Delta boys, they're really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, they made it to... Lost to Northwood in the semi-state last year, and they're they might be even better this year. Yeah, they they coach Detweiler does a great job down there. They, I'd be curious to see if, if Valley wound up playing Delta. Mm-hmm. Of course, the last time Valley played Delta was in that regional back in 2019. Right, right. When they played at Marion, Marion and Delta mm-hmm. won 54-28. Yeah. So uh, Coach Stasiak, I mean, boy, he talk about an improvement from last yeah. year. Four wins last year. They are ten and five. Two and one in the conference. We talked about that loss to to Valley. Nothing to be ashamed of. They held Valley to forty four points. Uh, they win Monday in their first round game of the uh, uh, Kitchen Classic against North Newton, fifty eight nineteen. 
Um, they they won uh, at Delphi on Wednesday night against North Montgomery in the semifinal round game, 65-48. And we'll play Delphi at 2 p.m. on Saturday uh, for the Kitchen Classic Championship. And you look at, I mean, that's, what, 10 wins now for Winnemac? Mm-hmm. After only four all of last year. And you look at last night's game. And we haven't even turned the new year yet. Yeah, you look at North, Montgom- North Montgomery. I mean, that, that North Montgomery game on Wednesday night, that game was tied 28-28 at halftime. Mm-hmm. Valley had scored them 37-20 in the second half. And you look at, I think we talked about this previous shows, the balanced scoring that Winnemac has. Marissa Iverson had 17 last night. Mm-hmm. Candace Croft had 17. Piper Link at 13, Maggie Smith at 13. Yeah, Maggie Smith, her last couple games, I mean, crazy. Yeah. And Piper Link, I mean, just this whole year has been tremendous for her. Right. Put up 65 points. Sadie Popejoy didn't score at all last night, but they didn't. I think from what I could tell, she may have gotten a little bit of foul trouble early. But, again, you know, when she gets going, that gives them another score. So this is a Winnemag team that offensively is just a different-looking team. Iverson, her improvement has been so great. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't you can't just you can't just run them off the three point line because mm-hmm. uh, they can get you that way. They can again. I like Candace Croft going downhill, or they can just dump the ball into the post. Yeah, and a lot of these girls were were around last year. It's just amazing, you know, how much improvement that uh, these girls have had. I mean, obviously Pope Joy is just a freshman, but you know, Iverson and uh, Smith and Piper Link. I mean, mm-hmm. they have uh, you know huge. Huge improvements yeah. from last season. They really, if you play the man, they're tough to contain off the dribble because of mm-hmm. their quickness. Mm-hmm. You play them in the zone, they can just shoot over the top of you. Mm-hmm. So they're just a tough team to defend. Yeah, yeah. Coach Stasiak has them playing well. It'll be interesting to see how they do against Delphi. I mean, uh, that's a team that uh, they've got a lot of speed up top. Right. They want to. All right. Delphi wants to run, mm-hmm. and they'll 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 release a girl. Yeah, you know, early on on uh, defensive plays right. on transition. Roth averages sixteen a game, and she gets. I think from what I can tell, she gets about two or three buckets a game just in transition. Yeah, just yeah, she had a couple runouts l- late, leaking out early. Mm-hmm. So, and then Pickering is a girl who really look. You know, she doesn't score. She didn't score a ton, but she really looks for her team. And then they got the two big girls inside, Miller and uh, uh, Maddie Brown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good little team that Delphi has there. And, yeah, so uh, a good, I, I interesting think a f- matchup. Good matchup. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then Winnemac has that December, uh, the January schedule is just always really tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, boy, you just got to look mm-hmm. at it right now. And you know, you said early, you said that uh, you thought that Winnemac was going to be the, uh, possibly the second best team in the conference. And I was like, really? Yeah, but I think you might be right. Mm-hmm. I mean, Judson's right up there. You know, Knox is right up there. But uh, Winnemac is is definitely in that mix. Yeah. They still got a lot of conference games to go. Only played three so far, right? And Winnemac, they got a pretty deep bench too. I think they can, mm-hmm. they can you know, I think can wear down teams too. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, obviously well coached. Yeah, <laughs> very well coached. Right, and, and much better on the defensive end too. Mm-hmm. I mean, whether it's man or zone, they can play. They well, they can play different zones. Yeah. You know, yeah. they can play two three. They can play one three one. They can you know they can go one two two if they need to. Yeah. I mean, they can do that. And then switch to man, and, and mm-hmm. you know, all in the same, mm-hmm. you know, couple of plays. Right, right. So, very, uh, very interesting team there at Winnemac. Uh, on the boys' side of things, you know, after going two and zero, they've lost six in a row. Uh, you know, a little rough stretch there, zero and three in the conference. Yeah, they lose to Triton thirty four forty one. Then they uh, lost their opener then, to right, North that, Newton and in that the Triton, kitchen. Yeah, right, they had Triton on the ropes in that game, and then Triton took over in the second half. Mm-hmm. And then the North Newton game, boy, that was just a real head scratcher. I mean, they beat North Newton earlier this year. They're up thirty seven, and then they lead North. The second game, they're playing second time they're facing North Newton this year, and it's the Kitchen Classic. They're up thirty seven twenty nine after three quarters. And North Newton outscores them thirteen to two in the fourth quarter, to win forty two to thirty nine. Mm-hmm. Just a head scratcher. And John Malco was fantastic in that game. He had twenty five of the thirty nine, but they didn't they didn't get a, uh, much else from other players. And North Newton wound up winning. And then North Newton winds up beating a you know beating a North Montgomery and mm-hmm. winning pretty handily. So, boy, that would have been a big win if Winnemac could have gotten that. But mm-hmm. you know they're just struggling and just uh, you know I think. You know, I think they've corrected some of their defensive issues that we talked about last week, but now they're struggling to score a little bit. 
Mm-hmm. So again, they play Delphi tonight. Uh, you know, Coach Colley is a Winnemac grad, so uh, we'll see how they do tonight. But it would be a, uh, see if they can get there some confidence going as we get into the holidays. Play Delphi or Rossville? I thought Pioneer played Delphi. Oh, Pioneers plays Delphi, and Winnemac plays Rossville. Rossville. What I sorry, yeah, 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 sorry about that. Winnemac yeah. plays Rossville on yeah. Friday. Pioneer plays Delphi on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Rossville. I mean, they're four and five. So. Right, and you know they'll they'll you know Rossville's very well coached, mm-hmm. so they'll be a t- they'll be a tough team. Sorry about that. Yeah, Winnemac plays Rossville on Thursday. Yeah. yeah, I could have wrote it down wrong too. I yeah. never <laughs> you never know with me. So yeah, um, I'm, excuse me, Winnemac plays Rossville on Friday. Right, right. Pioneer plays Delphi, Delphi. tonight. Yes, Thursday. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right, we got that all straightened out. Yeah, so. but uh, you know you waited until the last segment of the last show of the year to make your mistake yeah to make my mistake yeah, yeah so that's all right okay we'll, we'll let you go we'll i mean we'll, we won't let you go we'll, okay. we'll let you slide okay thank you thank you <laughs> Maybe i shouldn't say we'll let you go <laughs> so yeah i think uh i think that's it i mean uh it's not quite it let's okay. give a shout out to dalton albert from valley who finished in third place at 215 pounds to the mckee invite okay only loss was to Alex Deming from Rochester. Got mm-hmm. pinned in the third period, but that's an undefeated top ten wrestler in the state. He lost mm-hmm. to. Yeah. So I think Dalton. It's too bad there's no TRC because I think Dalton would be a factor in the TRC. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hope, but I'm looking forward to him having a good season, and I think he still looks, he still looks to me like a guy who will make some at least get to regional and, uh, you know, and I'll be curious to see how he does, especially with Valley now going from the Plymouth sectional to the Peru sectional. Uh, how far can Dalton make it? Because mm-hmm. he's this might be an easier road for him. Mm-hmm. The other kid that I liked was Colton Sisk, the sophomore at heavyweight. Um, mm-hmm. He's a big kid, but he finished in fourth at the McKee at a pretty tough weight class. Obviously, he ran into a very tough wrestler in Brady Beck from Rochester in the semis. But he's going to have a good year, I think. And then uh, Thad Shambaugh is a kid who's uh, at 132 going to have a nice year. Uh, I know I also wanted to, uh, we kind of mentioned him a little bit, but our, our boy Pete from Caston, um, you know, he does a lot of broadcasting with Blair there for us down at uh, Caston, and mm-hmm. he did well at, the, at McKee as well. Yeah, two quick pins, went three and one, I think, on the day, lost to a very good kid from Rochester and Wien in the final, but yeah, Pete's having a nice year. They got a, the Caston wrestling team, they got about like 20 kids on their team this year. Really? They got a, they're very, Pete's a senior, but otherwise, other than Pete, they're very young. They got a mm-hmm. bunch of freshmen. They're just you can tell that you can tell they're a little raw on the mat, but mm-hmm. learning. Yeah, you know a lot of the kids. You know, we talked about Gage Manier and Ashton Boyer uh, from football season, and they're they're wrestling too. I think Rigney is wrestling too, so it's it, that's good. I mm-hmm. mean, because if they get that mat time, I think it's going to help them out in football as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're watching and we're not mentioning your team or your sport or whatever, um, send us your information because we. We try to we try to talk about everybody that we cover in every sport. So yeah, we want to talk about everybody yeah. if we can. Yeah, we we can't get uh, we can't get everything on our own. So um, I know Pioneer Wrestling uh, they had a, a really good uh, meet the other day, but I I don't know any details on it, so we can't really talk knowledgeably about it. So if you're watching and, and you're wondering why we're not talking about, it, just send us some info. Right, right. Because yeah. again, we go to more. We not only go to the basketball games, we go to the wrestling tournaments, and we go to the swim meets. Yeah, we, we be in Val. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just crazy the number of event, events you go to in a week. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> so, well, I think that's going to do it. Uh, wrapping up 2023, glad that, uh, you know, we really appreciate everybody for watching all of our shows. And I know yeah. it's a... Oh, the Valley Swim, the Valley Relay set the school record in the... 400 free relay okay wanted to mention that too yeah yeah a lot of familiar names on that team whetstone and smith and yeah. uh yeah a lot of uh, a lot of names we've been talking about for a few years from yeah yeah. Valley. yeah and there's a freshman on the team aiden bowers yeah okay so um yeah, yeah. not now that's the year that, okay, uh, you, okay. <laughs> so, so we're gonna wrap it up here i hope everybody has a wonderful uh holiday season and merry christmas happy new year val uh, same to you and happy holidays to you. Yes, we uh, we really appreciate everybody for tuning in. I know uh, you know we get a lot of positive feedback from this. Uh, it's it's a lot of work to do this on top of everything else. I know uh, Val does a ton of work, obviously going to all those events and then writing about all those events. 
and then uh, talking about all those events. So there's a, right. lot, there's a lot goes into that. Right. I'm also in the Rochester Sentinel. I'm in the uh, – Shopping Guy News every Wednesday. So, yeah. 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 And on the blog, rtc4.com mm-hmm. or rtc4sports.com. Yeah. Catch out uh, all of Val's writing there as well. And we really appreciate it. We appreciate you, Val. And uh, thanks for everything. And uh, hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.